Okay, my watch says it is 11 a.m. Welcome to this week's Art Starts Explores. Uh, my name is Kay Slater, and I am the gallery preparator and coordinator at Art Starts and Schools. Also joining us um, in the chat channel is Leah Horlick, our program manager. And it's really great that Leah is here with us because while I am making things under the camera here, um, I can't see your comments and I want your comments. So if you have any questions, um, if you want to uh, comment or you want to share what you're making at home, if you have an idea, um, we would love to hear from you. And so Leah is there to answer any of your questions and to respond um, to you in real time. If you're watching this video after the fact, and um, you, can, you can see we don't have any captions on this video right now, and it's really important to us um, that all of our archived or all of our saved videos are always accessible to as many people as we can. Um, after, after I'm all done, we take those videos and then we add captions. And then they're up for you to check um, anytime. So if you've just popped in for a second and you don't have time to stick around, don't worry, you can come back. And if you're watching this maybe later in the week, um, then you, you know, you have access to, to all of this later. Um, and you can leave a comment then. Um, you might have an idea now, and then you are working later in the week. You can come back and you can share with us about what you ended up making. Uh, we would love to hear from you anytime. Uh, so please feel free to comment in the, uh, in the comments. Leah is there and ready to respond. So before we get started um, on week two of collage for Art Starts Explorers, here I'm going to take this down because we did start. It is 11. So now I can move those to the side for next week. Um, before I get started on part two of collage, um, as you know, I always like to start um, Explorers. Turn it around because I forgot my stickies over there. Uh, I like to start, start Explorers with the rules of Explorers. And I would say rules, and rules are, are very, it's a very rigid word. These are more like guidelines. These are ideas that we like to have in our, our head when we are creating and exploring together um, to just make space so that we can, we can be creative. Um, but all of these things, they take practice. Some weeks you're going to be better at them than others. Some weeks I'm going to be better at them than others. So that's why every week we like to bring them up to remind ourselves that we are, we're not just practicing art making, we're also practicing these rules of being ex art explorers together. So the first one is respect. We practice respect by checking in with ourselves, finding out how we feel today. We check in with each other. So um, if, you're, if you're making with your families or your guardians or with your neighbors, your best friends, your cousins, whoever you have to make with, or maybe you're making by yourself and then later you're going to share. Um, but we like to check in with each other to see how we are by checking in, ask how you're feeling, ask how your morning was, ask how ready you are to make some artwork. Just asking questions is always a good way to get started and it's a good way to practice respect. We want to respect our tools. Uh, that means we want to use them safely, we want to use them carefully, and if we start trying to use our tools in a way that they weren't intended, uh, we want to be respectful and potentially um, clean them up afterwards, put them away properly, um, and always be safe when we're using them. And then we want to respect the land. And so I'm coming to you um, in my studio on stolen, unceded Coast Salish territory. And in particular, I want to name the Musqueam, Slavitude, and Squamish people. And I want to try and be a respectful guest while I am working and playing and thinking while I am on this land. And so you could also take a second to practice respect by thinking about the land that you're on right now. When you're ready to move on from that thought, we also like to practice that nothing is for keeps. By that I mean that everything that we're going to make this week um, isn't something that I plan to put up on my fridge for everybody to see afterwards. Maybe we'll share with everybody who's making with us. Maybe we want to run into the other room and show um, a grandparent or a friend who didn't have the ability to make in the same space as us. 
But when we're all finished, when we're done sharing, when we're done asking all the questions, when we're done thinking, we want to take it apart. We're not trying to make anything that is for keeps. Um, so I always encourage us to go to the recycling bin to take our materials out so that we already know that these aren't precious. This isn't a clean, nice, a new piece of paper um, that we're going to be working with. So that means that you're a little less worried about being, uh, it being perfect and having a finished project. And that is where we get to uh, point three, which is no expectations. So before we get started, even if we have a picture in our head, maybe you practiced collage with me last week and you have an idea that you wanted to try this week. And that's okay, that's not a bad thing. But I recommend, I encourage you, I challenge you to take that idea and maybe put it aside for a second so that we can try something that you didn't actually have in your head before. And that, that's just so that um, we can allow ideas to happen as we go and not really be worried about it being perfect at the end. All ideas are good ideas. And just because we had an idea at the start doesn't mean that an idea that we have halfway through doesn't mean we can't go in another direction when we're practicing art making. It also allows for surprise. Maybe somebody beside you is doing something really, really cool. Or maybe you do something that you didn't expect, which encourages you to do something that you, you never would have done if you hadn't done that first thing. And that's a good way of surprising yourself as you're practicing art making. So those are three ways that we like to um, practice when we are here at Explorers. And I always like to check those out at the beginning of every session. So I'm gonna put them to the side because they're still here. Just because the stickies have moved away doesn't mean we're not practicing that. And so um, last week, uh, last Saturday at 11, we did collage part one. And we looked at things like ready-mades. Ready-mades are things that are already made. You didn't have to draw them. So instead of having to draw the picture, you go and you find a picture. And so for example, I think I've got a picture here. Maybe one that isn't cut up. There you go. That is a picture that was already made already made. Get rid of the all and it's just a ready-made. So that's the name of this. It's a ready-made that we can pull into our collage at any time. We also looked at morphing a picture. So we drew one picture and then we cut it up and we ripped it up and we manipulated it and we made it into another picture. And then the third thing that we did was we problem solved um, with a collage. So we had a, a defined area, so like a piece of paper, and we had to work just to that piece of paper fit all of the things that we wanted to paste onto our page. As you remember, or if this is your first time joining us, collage basically means to stick together, like a stick. Um, and so we were being a little, a little funny last week because we weren't actually sticking anything permanently. We were kind of just sticking the ideas onto the page and still being able to move them around because nothing is for keeps. This week we are going to get our glue out, but if you don't have any glue at home, you can continue to try collage without any glue and just try things um, uh, without having to paste them down and make them permanent, especially because we're going to throw them in the recycling bit afterwards. But I wanted to show you an example of something that we could do with glue, something that we could paste down, and I'm still going to get rid of the final thing that we make. Even if it looks great, it was just an exercise. I also promised us this week we were going to look at collage as music. And so before we get sticky and we get the glues out, I wanted us to go in that direction. So I'm going to move the sandwich board to the side. I'm going to move my mini ghost over to the side. And I think I could leave the letters there because that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so how do we collage with music? What am I talking about? So maybe you have heard a mashup before. A mashup is uh, music that takes one song and another song. And usually what happens is they lay the music on top of each other. Um, and that's, that's not a new thing. That's been happening for a really long time. Um, what's cool about it is, is that usually they're able to do, uh, they're able to take music from different genres. So for example, if you had one um, song that had a folk sound or country music sound is what, what some people say, and then um, you had a hip hop or R&B song um, that was, was, it sounded completely different but you were able to find the beats in common, or you were able to find that they kind of sounded the same in certain places. And then those similarities allowed them to be fit on top of each other, and then you made a whole new song. And how is that different than when we have a whole bunch of cut pieces of paper, and we put them onto the paper, well, we have two pieces of music, and we cut up that music. 
stick it together and make a whole new song. So I don't have the software. Um, I don't have the ability to do a full mashup. And I want this to be something that you can practice at home. Um, but what I do have are hands. And even if you can't hear the sounds they make, you can probably feel when you put your hands together. Maybe it feels a vibration. Try that with me right now. So if you are going to use your hands as your music maker, ask your body, what do you feel when you clap? And when you hear, when you hear a sound, are you just hearing it in your ears? Or is the act of clapping also part of your experience? What do you notice? Ask the people with you. Maybe they're clapping differently than you. What about the shape of your hands? If you change the shape of your hands, how does that change the sound? So we have a musical instrument we have a sound making instrument without even needing to pick up something. We don't even need to know how to write music. We don't need to know how to sing. We can make music with just our hands. And if you don't have hands or fingers, you could also use your arms. You could um, use your, what else could you use? Actually, ask your body that. If you didn't have hands, how could you make sound? What parts of your, of your body can make sounds? bringing your arms together. You can't see my legs, but maybe smacking your legs together. How else? How else? What about with your mouth? Could you make sounds with your mouth? Take a second and really check in with your body and see all the ways that you can make sound. Now, the cool thing about that is that we don't actually need to know how to write music. We just need to be able to tell ourselves um, a sign or a symbol it is connected with the, the sound that we're making. So for example, if I decided, and this is up to you, you can decide however you want to mark um, um, sound when you are writing your own music. But I'm gonna say that when I clap my hands and they're flat like this, I'm gonna draw two flat lines. And that's just for me. I have to know that. But however you're going to be doing it yourself, you tell yourself, um, how, how you could mark that down on the page when you make that sound. So I'm going to make two lines that equals clapping flat. And then I'm going to do two curved lines when I clap my hands with a curve to them, right? Because there's this curve to my hands. So I'm going to mark that as doing a curve. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do a curve and then I'm going to do a curve. And that shows that they have to go together like that. And that's okay. I'm just trying things out right now, right? You can scribble it out. You can change your mind as you go along. If you start making a whole bunch of these for all the different parts of your body that you figured out how to make sounds with, you might get confused. So you might want to leave a note underneath that goes, that says something like flat. Or you could say something that says long. Or you could draw a picture of two hands. However it tells you um, that that's the action that you should do when you see that mark, then that's, then that's, that's good. That's your own notation. That's you making those symbols. Okay. So I've decided that those are the two instruments I'm going to work with right now, or the two sound makers. I'm going to work with flat hands and I'm going to work with uh, cupped hands or so curved hands. But there's one other sound that I'm missing that I'm going to need a mark for. So when I go like this, What's missing? It's the sound when I'm not doing anything, when my hands are off to the side, when I'm not making noise. And when you're looking at music, that has a word. It usually is called rest. It means your hands are taking a rest. Your musical instrument is taking a rest. Your breath is taking a rest. Your song is taking a rest. And so we want to also make a mark that indicates a pause or a break or a stop or a rest. And so I've decided that my rest is going to be a box. And your rest could be whatever you want. If you do know music notation, you could do it. You could do what it means for you. But I've decided that a pause or a rest is going to be a box. Oh, and I'm going to I'm going to go cup under this because that was me telling myself that I have cupped hands like I was going to cup water 
And so those are my top tans. Okay, so now we've got these three marks here. And I'm going to make a song or I'm going to um, have a rhythm that I'm going to write here to tell myself how to play that rhythm. So I'm going to go flat, rest, cup, rest, flat hands, rest. Okay, so when I see that line, I know that I need to go, and you can clap along with me, flat, Rest, up, rest, flat, rest. Now it might not be a really exciting song, but we did just clap out a rhythm. So I'm going to cut that out because that's my first song. And yours might look different, right? Your symbols, but also the rhythm, the, the order that you've put them for your song. Or you can copy me along. That's that's okay too, right? I totally give you permission to copy exactly what I'm doing, and then you can try it. And then when we start collaging the song, that's an opportunity for you to try something completely different. Okay, so now we want a song that is different from this one. Okay, I'll put it there so that we've got the reference. But now I'm gonna go cup, cup, rest, clap, or I guess flat. Flat, rest. That's my song number two. So how would I play that? Cup, cup, rest. Clap, clap, rest. Okay, so now I have my second song. I'm so curious what your song looks like. It probably doesn't look exactly like mine. Okay. So just so that we've got multiple things to collage, let's make one more song. Okay, for this one, this one I'm going to go rest, rest, flat, flat hands, rest, 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 cup hands. Okay, so I'm going to show that I'm resting by just having my hands and I'm going to just emphasize them by dipping my hands down again. But however you decide that you're going to do your rest, that's up to you. So I'm gonna go rest, rest, flat hands, rest, 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 cup hands. Okay, I have three songs now. Three songs that I wrote myself using my own notation. So, there's a couple things that we can do. If this is song one, and I'm going to just show it by a number. I'm going to go number one, number two, number three. Those are all their own songs. Sure, they were cut from the same piece of paper. Sure, they're using their own, um, they're using the same notation, the same symbols, but they're their own songs. This one can be played by itself, this one can be played by itself, and this one can be played by itself. So the first and easiest way that we can paste them together that's right, is by just pasting them together. And whether or not you decide you want to use glue or tape, I do have some tape here. So because I want to show you that I'm actually pasting them together, I'm going to tape these down so that they're all one song. There we go. Can you play this song? I'm going to try. There you go. So that was different than anything that we had done before. But because I only just taped it down, I should be able to move it around. So we're pretending that the song, right, the song all together is there. And I'm going to cut the song up. And now I'm going to put it here. Yeah, I'll just put it right back there. That's how I'm going to, I'm going to collage the song. If I had a second person with me, what I could also do is I could give them this song, this is your song, and this is my song, 
and we could play them at the same time. They might not sound great together, especially because we're trying at the beginning, and they may be a little bit offbeat, and we don't actually know exactly the time that we're going to be doing it together, but we could look at each other, we could talk about that beforehand, or we could just try and see what happens. But even just playing them at the same time, one person clapping at the same time as I clap, we're doing a mashup. We're, we're sticking those two songs together, even though they weren't necessarily written to go together. But because I don't have a second person, and if you do, I encourage you to do it. And if you feel good about it, I'd love to see what your, what your song uh, ends up being. And for people who can hear it, maybe you could record the sound and you could share it with other people. If you wrote this song or you decided to perform it with a sibling or with a neighbor, if you have permission, you could record it and then you could play it for yourself later and it becomes your song. Okay, so I'm gonna play, oh, did, did I do that one right? I think I wanted it to go three, one, two. Yep, I think that's what I want. And so I'm being very intentional. I decided that I was going to cut it up into pieces and that that was how I was gonna put it together. Okay, I'm gonna play it one more time. This is my collage composition using just my hands. That's okay, let's start again. Whew, that was harder because I wasn't expecting to have to go from the cupped hand to the flat hand. That was great. I was actually really happy that I, that I didn't get that the first time and I had to try again. It wasn't just so easy. And even though I wrote the song, doesn't mean that I was going to be perfect. There are lots of ways that you could collage music. I pulled out uh, just a couple of rhythm making instruments, but if you know how to play the piano, or you know how to sing, or you have any other instruments in your house, or your um, apartment, or your studio, or your classroom that you want to try, um, grab them, try them out, and then see if you can play the song using the different instruments that you have. If you also know how to read music and you have permission, or maybe you want to scan and take a picture or print some music, um, you can also cut and paste some songs together. However, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, where when you're using things that belong to someone else, so for example, a song, there was somebody who wrote that song, there was somebody who paid for that song, there was somebody who performed that song. And so there might be some rules around um, when you cut and paste somebody else's piece together, so specifically music, if you were going to start mashing up songs together, there's a complicated uh, system around that, that it doesn't actually become your song. It still belongs to those people who made those original things. It's your practice for trying them. When you sing them or play them, they're going to be your own way of doing it, but it does still belong to those two people. So we want to be aware of that when we're trying these kind of things. Okay. So because I said that I wanted to try this, I found some drumsticks in my, my house. And this is funny because I don't play the drums, but I do have a lot of percussion instruments. So things like the box, um, I have a cowbell, I have various other pieces and instruments um, that uh, end up being why I have uh, drumsticks. In fact, I think that these are two different drumsticks. Yep, this is an actual drumstick and this is from the game Rock Band. <laughs> so they don't even match, but that's okay. They're two sticks. And so you can also tell yourself, okay, well now I want to try and mash it up and I want to play it with a different instrument. How is it different from when I use my hands? How would you even read this when you use um, uh, drumsticks? Do you even need to make noise when you read this? Could we just be playing? And so maybe instead this becomes you know, these are the squares, just like my, my square pieces here. And then, oh, I don't know how I would do a curve. Uh, hmm. Or maybe curve, curve. Okay, and flat. Okay, so now I've decided, just don't, however you wanted to do it, but I'm just looking at it right now and making things up as I go, because I'm exploring with you as well. I come up with some ideas that we're going to try. But before I explore with you, I also don't know what's going to happen. So I'm allowed to practice surprise. Okay, so I've decided that the two squares are when I'm going to touch these blocks. When this is 
uh, when the flat lines are there, I'm going to hold my drumsticks like this. And then when I see the curved drumsticks, I'm going to hold them like this. And so it's both going to be a something that you can hear, but it's also going to be something that you can watch. So now music is not just something that you can hear. Okay, I'm going to go along and I'm going to go There you go. Well, I could have just gone with one block, right? I saw the two there and I put them out, but then I decided that every time I saw the block, that's when I was going to hit them. However you want to try making music, writing music, and then cutting it up and pasting it back together again, that's up to you. But I just wanted to show you that with collage, it doesn't just have to be visual arts. It doesn't have to be something that you cut up and paste onto a page, even though the last part of today's workshop is going to be more traditional collage, which is going to be using paste and tape and glue. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm also gonna move my collage letters over to the side so that we've got a little bit more working area, or at least I have some more working area. Okay, and so I'm gonna bring a piece of paper down into the center here. So, Chances are you have probably done collage where um, somebody has told you that you just need to cut a bunch of pieces, a uh, bunch of pictures out of a magazine or a newspaper or, I don't know, whatever they gave you that you could cut up. Now that meant that you had permission to cut those things up, right? And I have permission. This was, these were just scraps that I found at Art Starts and I'm able to cut them up. Um, but this did come from a book at one time, so I know that I had permission to cut this up. I don't encourage you to go and just cut up your books. You really want to make sure that you have permission. And just because it's your book doesn't mean that you should be cutting up, up the, the pages, especially if somebody gave you that book. Or especially if you are young and you, don't, uh, and you want to be able to read it again later. So there are ways of getting around that. You could ask somebody to take a picture of it. You could take it to the library and you could scan just that one page and then you could cut that one page. There are lots of things that you could do rather than just cutting up a book. And I always encourage you to do that uh, before, before you take a scissors to it. And make sure you ask some people, right? I got permission both from the person who gave Art Starts the book and Art Starts. Um, I asked other people before I cut this up. So I had permission. Okay. What I want to talk to you about and what I want to um, have you start questioning when you're doing collage is that this was really easy. I cut this picture out. I didn't think about it. It's a door. A door doesn't really have a feeling, or at least I don't think it has a feeling. So we're going to go with the fact that doors don't have feelings. So when I cut this up, there wasn't any feelings attached to that. Sure, we could think about feelings. The door is open, so maybe we feel good about that because we can escape. Maybe there's fresh air coming inside, the blue sky is really nice, and we want to go outside. We can attach emotions to this, but, but generally this is just a door, and so we can feel pretty safe about this. As soon as we bring in faces to collage, as soon as we start cutting up faces, I want you to take a moment and think about how that feels. If I was just going to cut, uh, just the, cut this, this head off, what does that make you think about? How does that make you feel? And it's okay if you feel scared or angry. And if you don't feel anything at all, that's okay too. It is just the picture of somebody, right? It is just a picture. This picture doesn't feel any anything at all. There's words on the other side of it. It is a piece of paper that has a picture of a person on it. But what if this was a picture of you? What if this was your face? You might feel really good going, okay, I want to use my face in this collage. And so you think about how you're going to add your face. And maybe you only want to cut the outside. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take the head off the shoulders, but I'm going to leave it so that the face is all intact. And if this was my face, I know because I've asked myself, I would feel okay with that. But take a second to imagine, if this was your face that you were cutting out from a piece of paper or a scan that you had, how would that make you feel? 
Maybe you've never asked yourself before. Maybe you've done lots of collages with your face and it's no big deal. Okay, so that's one thing. But now, if that was your face, what about cutting into it? How would it feel if you cut it in half? Or if you just cut the eyes out? Maybe it's really funny. Maybe when you're cutting it up, you've never looked at your face like that and it makes you feel funny or it makes you wanna laugh. But maybe it doesn't make you feel great. And that's okay. That's okay to feel that way. And the reason I want us to think about that is because when we cut out pictures of people in magazines, it's easy for us to forget that the person that we are seeing in those magazines, in those ads, um, in those pictures, those, those are a real person that got photographed for that, for that advertisement or for that article or for that picture. And so I just wanted us to take a moment to think about that. And if it takes you longer than I've given you to think about it, that's okay. And if you wanna come back to it later and think about it, that's okay too. But thinking about the things that we are, we're using when we take something from another place and we reuse it is important. It would be one thing if I drew the picture myself because I've given myself permission to draw that picture. In fact, I, I encourage you to try that out. Get a, get a picture of yourself that you are allowed to use, whether it's a scan or a photograph or something, and then draw a picture of yourself. And then cut it out and see if it feels exactly the same way. It's okay if it does, but it's also okay if it doesn't. And understanding that allows us to build something called empathy. That's understanding how somebody else might feel. Okay, so I've cut out this head and I'm not gonna cut out much more of it, but I could really go into it if I just wanted to have these eyes, right? I could just cut out these eyes. And if I wanted to just have a hand, I could just cut out the hand. And if I just wanted to have a cow head, I could just cut out that head, right? But I want to be a little bit more intentional about that. I think I'm going to leave the whole head there. And right now, because it's facing in this direction, right, it is a head. What happens when we go like this? Does it still feel like a head? Kind of. To me, I see a head now that looks like it could be sleeping. Do you see how I had to move it down the page? I felt like this ended up being the bed. I made that decision. The bed could be like here if I was doing a drawing. But I felt without even thinking about it, that I had to move the head down there because now it looks like more like this head is sleeping there. And that's kind of what we're doing when we're doing collage is we're thinking about where things should go in, in relation to the page as we're crafting an image. So if I was gonna use this door, um, I could just use this to have this as a door, but if I look a little bit deeper at some of the shapes, what do I notice? I notice some rectangles. I notice a blue sky. I notice a straight line. I notice a handle. I notice some trees. And so if I wanted to start cutting this, I have so many more options than just a door. And so before you take the scissors or you start ripping paper, even if you look at a picture and go, oh, I want a door, it's good to look at all the other things that are on that page because all of a sudden you have more than just the one thing that you were looking at and you have more materials. And you don't end up with a whole bunch of magazine pages where you've only cut out one thing and then you just throw it out. See, I had this door, but I really like this color. And if I hadn't cut it out like this, I wouldn't even have known that this was this neat shape. So I actually needed to cut it out before I could see how cool the shape was. And it could be so many things. It could be an arrow. It could be a V. It could be the neck of this person's jacket. So without even looking at the door, I was able to find this really cool color and shape. And that's what I mean by slowing down and deep looking before you start cutting things. But I'm not done with the door. In fact, I don't even have to cut out more of this to be able to put this down 
And now I've got the opportunity to make a whole different scene. So here, I'm going to move this head and this collar or this V or this arrow head to the side for a second. And I'm going to bring the door back in here. But we haven't glued anything down yet, right? Collage is all about gluing. But because we haven't brought glue into this yet, we still have all these options. So what happens if I decide I'm going to draw the rest of the picture I just cut out? It looks like the trees came over here. And then they kind of come back up over here. So I'm going to guess that the trees came down like this. And with that mark, I'm going to take this away for a second, and I'm going to finish drawing some trees in the background. Big fluffy trees. These are more like bushes, aren't they? That's okay. Trees, bushes. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a tree over here. Actual tree. There we go. There's some branches. There we go. So I got a tree, and I got these bushes. So now I'm going to bring this back onto the page, line it up. Where was it? It's right there. And there we go. So now we've taken this thing out of a page and we've added it to our drawing, and we have both a drawing and uh, something that we cut out of a magazine. And you know what? I'm going to glue it down. I keep saying that uh, this session we're going to use some glue, so for me, I'm going to use the glue. But remember, if you don't have any glue, that's okay. So I have a glue stick. And I'm going to use the glue stick. And I like these kind of glue sticks. Uh, this one right now is the all-purpose glue stick. And you'll usually see these in your classrooms or um, community centers. Um, and they're usually pretty expensive. And they're great because if you get them on your clothes, you don't have to worry about it. They're, uh, you get them on your hands, you can wash them off. But if you have access to school glue, which I also have, I have a big bucket of it right here, if you have access to this kind of glue, the white glue, What's great about using this with collage is that you could add water to it. You could smear it all over a page. You could use it with um, a glue stick and then smear it around. Um, using white glue with collage is really great. If you have access to both of them, why not try a session where you see what's different about both of them? In fact, if you have multiple collage pieces that are similar, can you make the same page twice? So one with white glue and one with a stick of glue and see what's different. I'm not going to give away any surprises because I've used both glues before, but I encourage you to say, what will happen if? And let us know. If you try those different things, tell us what happens because maybe you'll find out something or learn something that we hadn't even thought about. And I say we, that when you tell me or you tell somebody else, they have the opportunity to tell somebody else who has the opportunity to tell someone else. So sharing what you learn when you're making art making is great because then they have the opportunity to go and try something that maybe they never thought about trying. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. I think I went right there. Yeah, because I want some of this tree to show up. I'm doing it. I'm committing. I'm gluing it down. Oh, goodness. And you know what? That's okay, too. Remember how we said we were practicing respect for ourselves? If you feel nervous about gluing things down, that's okay. And if you're like, no, I can glue anything anywhere, that's okay, too. But that's, that's a nice way to check in with other people, right? If somebody's feeling nervous, you can ask them why, especially if you don't understand. Or you could let them be nervous and just allow them to be nervous. And when you want to help them later, you could acknowledge it. You could say, I know you're nervous. How can I help you? Or I'm not nervous. Here's why I'm not nervous. Always share when you're doing your art making because you never know what you're going to learn by sharing your experience. Okay, so I've got my Sharpie back out again. And I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the lines that are here. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go, see how this door frame looks like it's cut up or cut off? I'm going to finish the line. Bring it over here. Because that looks like that's how it can be finished. But now I've got all this space, and it looks like past this door frame, there's a whole world outside. So now I'm going to build to this world that I'm making. And you can place, what we did last week was we placed all of the things first. And so you can take all of the pieces without any glue 
and make the plan before you even start gluing things down, right? And then once you've decided where you want everything to go, you can then take the pieces carefully, add glue to them, and then put them back in the place where you had laid them out. This week I'm trying something a little different. This week I'm stuck with something. I can't actually change this base, so now I have to respond to it. Now I have to look at what I'm making and add other things to it. What do I have this week? Well, when I went looking through my studio of things that I had permission to cut up, I had these pages. I had some writing pages from a book that, um, that I had cut up because I made another project out of that. I had some comics from Free Comic Book Day. And so before I cut up this comic, I want to take a second and remember when I was talking before about how you would feel if it was your face that somebody was cutting up and how we want to think about other people who have made those faces. And just like with the music, when I said, if you are taking music that somebody else wrote or somebody else sang, they're part of what you're making, even if you don't ask them permission, even if you don't call up your favorite musician and say, hi there, I really want to use your music. And that would be funny because sometimes we don't know those musicians and how would we even get a hold of them? So when we're using those things, uh, when we're using things that belong to other people, we're doing it without their permission. And so we want to be careful about that. For music, when we're just practicing, when it's going to be just for ourselves, generally it's okay. Usually there's, there's an, it, uh, people understand that it's okay as long as you just keep it to yourself. But if you start sharing it with other people, then all of a sudden you're kind of telling people that you did have permission to do something from that original creator. And we didn't. So we want to be aware that when we're using something that belongs to someone else, that how it would make us feel if somebody took our picture without asking us and cut it up. Or if we wrote a song and somebody cut it up and then used it and performed it and called it their own. How would that make you feel? And so some people, um, when they make those things, they're okay. They think that it's a kind of sharing. And then sometimes they don't feel okay. And some people, when they draw pictures, are going to feel really good when you copy them because they feel like you're giving them a compliment. They realize that what you did was good. And other people don't want to be copied at all. They don't want you to draw the same thing as them. And that's okay. Everybody's a little bit different. So when we're looking at comics, when I start cutting up the comics, somebody drew this. There was a person who sat down and drew this. In fact, with comics, there wasn't just one person who drew it. There was one person who had to come up with the idea, who came up with the characters. Somebody else who drew it in pencil. Somebody else who came in and colored it. Somebody else who came in and added the black ink to it. And then somebody else who wrote all the letters. So it's not just one person, and that's why when you look at some of these comics, there's lots of names at the side, and those are just some of the names that are associated with a comic when, you, when, you, um, when you're looking at them. So I don't have permission from these four people to cut this up. But I'm just going to use this for practice. I also have multiple versions of this, and this does belong to me. But I wanted to take a second before I took scissors to it to realize that this is not mine. And that when I cut this up, I'm, I'm doing it knowing that there are a whole bunch of people that are in, were involved in this process. And I don't know how they would feel when I do this. So I want to be aware. And if I ever met any of these people and they told me they didn't feel good about that, then that I would have to, I'd have to be okay with that. And even if it felt bad, I'd have to acknowledge that what I was doing was something that they didn't like. So if you're not sure, generally it's a good idea to stick uh, to keep away from um, things that you're not sure about. For advertisements in magazines, generally, generally it's okay because somebody has been paid for it um, and you're using it in a completely different way. But if you're using uh, comics to make other comics, then you want to be aware of that. If you're using music that belongs to somebody else to make your own music, and you want to be aware of that, right? You are actually taking from someone else. Okay, so I said all of this. I have I have permission. This is my comic. I got it on free comic book day. Um, there were lots of these, these printed. I'm going to feel okay cutting up this page. But I am still aware that what I'm doing is that I'm making that decision. 
trying to rip this page out. I said I would. And I've decided that I'm going to cut this character right here. I'm going to add it to my collage. I'm looking at all the things that I have to cut out as I go along. And the nice thing about comic book paper is it is actually really easy to cut. It's so easy to cut that if you go too fast, you could probably cut something you don't even need to cut. And you'll notice I'm cutting right through the words. There are these words here. And the words aren't part of what I'm using for my picture. And so that's okay. It's okay that they show up there. Because I just want to indicate, I want to show the outline of the person, of the figure that I'm doing. And I'm going to cut them off at the belt. Again, I'm not even going to use their whole body. Oh, which means that I have to cut into this person's hair. You know what? I'm not even going to use their arm over here. I'm going to cut their arm off as well. Okay. So you know what? I keep calling this a person. I keep saying this person. And, and I want to get back to what I was saying before. Is that this, this is not a person. This is a picture. right? This is a piece of paper that has a picture on top of it. And while there's all those complicated things that we were talking about, about the person who was drawing it, the person who came up with it, um, the company that printed it, um, at the end of the day, this is a piece of paper, right? This is a piece of paper that has a picture on it. And so when we're looking at it just like that, this person, this drawing, this doesn't have feelings. So I'm going to start just calling it it because it is. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a figure that's on here. Especially when we start going into collage, we can look at this as just being a shape. Sure, um, there, is, there is a figure here. We see a face, we see an arm, we see a hammer, we see a shirt that they're wearing, um, that it's wearing. But really, if we were gonna look at, and the best way to do this is just to flip it over like this, because I didn't actually cut this side. All of a sudden we can look at it for something other than it is. Here, I'm gonna bring this paper down. And check it out, right? Now all of a sudden, it's this really interesting shape. I, I cut it so that it would be in this shape. But not only, not only is it not the shape that we saw when we looked at it this way, but it has to be flipped over, right? So we're now looking at it the reverse side. We're now forced to look at it so that the hammer is on this side rather than on this side. And it doesn't have to even be in this orientation. What happens if we start to rotate it? Really interesting things, actually. In fact, if I put it over like this, and I remember on the other side that this kind of had that hammer shape and that this was a head. I'm going to move this aside. Remember I said we were practicing surprise and sometimes you can have ideas as you go along? I have an idea. And so I'm going to take this shape. And I'm going to draw around the outside of it. Because I still want to use this shape later. But I really like what happened and I really like what I learned by flipping it over. This is another cool thing about collage, is that just because uh, collage is about pasting things down doesn't mean that when we cut these things up, they don't um, inspire new ideas. Okay, check it out. So what if we decided that this was now going to be a person over here, or a figure, and uh, I'm going to go maybe this is down like this, and that was their arm, and so they've got this big arm over here, adding pieces to it, and that this is now, this is now their fist. Drum up like that. Yes. And so they're kind of raising their fist up. It's kind of funny because it looks like their arm is coming out of their ear. Maybe that's, oh, maybe their ears. Maybe their ears are big fists. <laughs> Right? Why sure not? Actually, I like that. I'm going to bring this back over here. And kind of draw that shape again. Right? I did not expect that this is what my drawing was going to look like before I started, but because I was open to whatever could happen, and I've got this awesome picture of this person with super ears. Maybe that's just their shoulders now. Yeah. 
So that came out of us making a collage, right? I, I cut this out. I was thinking about it. I was being intentional about cutting. So intentional means that I was basically that I was making the decision. So the difference between being intentional and not being intentional is me going, okay, uh, this is the shape that I want versus picking up a piece of paper and going, okay, well, I don't really know what's going to happen. And that's okay sometimes too, because you might be able to uh, find really cool things that happen when you weren't being intentional, when you weren't trying something in particular. And again, remember, I had permission to do this. So you have to make sure you have permission before you cut something up, but it can, it can feel really good, especially if you're being safe with scissors. I'm being safe. I'm keeping the scissors away from my hands. But there we go. That is the difference between being intentional and not being intentional. Same as ripping, right? You know how much I love to rip paper. So you could be intentional when you rip. And if you just wanted to, here, okay, if you just wanted to get one piece out of a piece of paper, you could go very slowly and you could be intentional make the decision that that's the piece that you wanted to pull out, right? Versus sometimes it just feels really good when you have permission to rip up some paper and see what happens. And remember, that's what Explorers is all about. What happens if, what happens if I rip up this paper? You know what? I love this. I love this because it kind of looks like this person with the big, the big uh, ear arms looks like they've exploded through something. So I'm going with it. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these pieces again and bring them over to the side so I can use them. And I'm going to add glue to this page. And I'm going to bring in something that's called chance, right? I'm going to take a chance. So just like when you roll the dice, I'm going to use my glue stick. And this is where I'm going to be intentional because I'm only going to glue places where I want the paper to stick. So I've decided that this guy kind of looked like he was coming out. This figure looked like they were coming out of a an area, right? Maybe out of a picture. Maybe they were coming out of the comic. Oh, I like that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue kind of around. Maybe I'll come over on top in a couple of different places where they have uh, where I've drawn them. But basically, I'm going to try and keep away from the figure. Just glue everywhere else. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and now, my favorite, my favorite thing to do, right, take that ripped paper and make use of it. In fact, I'm not even done ripping it. I'm going to keep ripping as I go along. I'm not going to be super intentional about the paper that I'm ripping, but I'm super intentional about why I'm ripping up the paper. And sometimes we want to rip up the paper just because it feels good, right? Just to see how it feels. Maybe we're feeling frustrated. Maybe we're feeling grumpy. Maybe we're feeling really happy, right? Because this is kind of like confetti. If you've ever seen confetti, which are like pieces of paper that float down for a celebration, right? So I'm being really intentional with um, the fact that I want to rip paper, but I'm not being intentional about where I'm ripping the paper. That doesn't really matter. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of push it down to places so it sticks to, the... again, I'm not being intentional. I don't really care what sticks where. I just kind of want it to stick to the page. There we go. <laughs> and there, I, you know what? I think I want a bit more up here. I love it. I'm really happy with how this turned out, right? And that's, and, and even though this is lots and lots of fun, I'm still going to feel okay putting this in the recycling bin afterwards. This was just something I tried. This is not something I need to keep. But now I know that if I ever wanted my collage to look like um, they were coming out of the page, I know that ripping up the paper might be a really fun way to do that. And maybe you learned something today when you were trying out your collage that, uh, that you didn't expect. And as always, I would love to hear about it. If that's what happened. <laughs> all right, getting it all, all attached. <laughs> there we go. There. And so I both drew this and I cut it out. Look at that. That remember this all came from me cutting out this piece and I didn't even end up using it. Right? This is the cool thing about not having any expectations. If I needed to use this piece, I might have gotten really stressed out that I didn't end up using it. 
and I may have stayed so focused on this, I wouldn't end up getting my super hero ear fist being. <laughs> if you have an idea or a name for this, I would love to hear about it. I'm really, I'm really happy with how that turned out. That was great. Okay, I'm going to put these ones to the side. And we've got about five minutes left. I'm going to come back to this, <laughs> this collage here. This seems so boring now compared to this one. That's okay. Um, so we were exploring this idea of bringing in drawing as well as bringing in um, pieces that we've taken from other places. And this all came from me looking at this piece like a shape, right? And so I really wanted to look at it like a shape. And I'm going to bring this person, or this, sorry, this character, this figure, back in here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it around the page and see if it makes sense that I can put it in here. And just like, I don't even need this piece to work, right? It already did something amazing. If I, if I decide at the end of the day that I don't want to use this in my piece, then what you can do is, especially if you have room to make um, art in the future, or if you plan to make collage, you could ask somebody to get you an envelope, or you could make an envelope. It's very, very easy to make an envelope. You just need to take a piece of recycled paper, fold it in half, you fold the corners. And if you have tape, that's great, but you don't even have to, especially if you're going to just put this uh, on a bookshelf or between two books. But look at that, you've got an envelope, right? So if we decided, um, and you know what, I think I am convincing myself, I don't want this in here. Originally I liked it because I looked in the comic and it looked kind of cool, but this looks like a nature scene and I don't need a figure that has a hammer. So I'm going to save it for later. So I'm going to put it in my envelope and I'm going to put it to the side. Because all of this is going into the recycling bin. That doesn't mean that when you are using the recycling bin or when you're drawing things and you're trying things, that if you come across something that's really cool that you want to save, that you have to throw that out, right? You didn't make any artwork with this yet. You could save this for next week. You could save this for next month. Eventually though, if it sticks around for a really long time and you never use it, you might wanna eventually put it back into the recycling bin and that's just fine. But if you think of a project you're not ready to work with yet and you find those objects and it doesn't work with your project, make yourself an envelope or ask for an envelope and stick it inside. I'm gonna put that over to the side and that's where my a uh, person with a camera is going to stick. So I'm going to look back on these pages again. Look at what I've got here. Oh, you know what? I think I have. Yeah. Okay. I pulled out. So for me, I have this old atlas. I have this old book of maps and they're very old and they don't represent how the world um, is now. They have um, old countries that now have become part of other countries. Sometimes the, the drawings that they had don't actually represent what the land actually looks like. Um, sometimes places like North America looks bigger than places like Africa, which are actually much, they, they're supposed to be bigger on the map. And so they get rid of these atlases. Uh, and so what I did was I went to a book sale where they were getting rid of atlases because they were inaccurate. And so the cool thing about this is that while I want to acknowledge that, that these are real lands and that there are people who live there and before the people who even lived there, before them, there were people who lived there. And so there is still something to, be th to think about and we should always be thinking every time we cut something up or every time we use that. But I feel pretty safe using this page uh, of Europe um, when I'm going to start cutting them up, especially if when I'm done looking at this and thinking about what it means to be looking at a map and cutting a map, there are so many cool shapes on this page, right? Um, in this in this case, I think I had I think I had my niece over, and they colored this section here, and I was okay with this because I was just going to be using this for art making later. But you might have heard people in the past talk about how uh, Italy, that's what this says here, Italy kind of looks like a boot. And they say that because boots with heels, maybe up here, I wanna make that clear to you looking at it. Boots with heels have that heel at the back and then they've got the front that comes up and then there's a boot that's there, right? Oh, that's kind of funny looking boots, that's okay. But check it out, right? Can you see the seam there? 
So if you wanted to have a boot in your collage and you knew you had a page, an atlas page somewhere, you could actually go and you knew already that you could cut out this shape and you'd have a boot for your collage. And that's why when we're, when we're uh, talking about deep looking, we, we want to take a second before we even pick up the scissors, we're gonna put them to the side, we want to really look at the thing that we're going to cut up or the thing that we're going to be doing. Because you'd be, you, you, you always have the opportunity to be surprised at what's going to happen if you allow yourself the time to actually go in and look. Okay, so it is 12 o'clock. We did a whole bunch today. We had our superpower fist hero man, ear hero man. <laughs> I really like this one, but I'm still gonna throw it in the recycling bin. But I was really happy to have that experience. We also looked at mashups with music. We looked at creating our own music, creating our own symbol to write music. We talked about permission when we were looking at taking work that belonged to somebody else and cutting it up. We thought about being intentional or making a decision before we did things. And we thought about how when we cut up a picture, especially if we're cutting up a face, that while just because we don't know the person just because we don't know the, the, um, the human who was photographed before we cut it up, we do want to realize that there was somebody who had their picture taken before we start cutting it up. We maybe we don't want to use all the pictures that we find just because they have, just because we're looking for a face in a magazine. So that was part two of two weeks of exploring collage, and we only scratched the surface. There are so many ways that you could explore collage. And if you think of any that we didn't cover in this past, uh, these past two weeks in our theme video or the two uh, hands-on workshop, we would love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out to us and give us a comment, uh, share what you are making. And I'm gonna spend the next five minutes voice off just cleaning up the space, showing because we always wanna make sure that we take the time at the end of our art making to clean everything up. That's your opportunity to, while we are still live, uh, chat with Leah or leave any comments and then I will take the video and I will caption it and it'll be ready for you to be able to share with people um, later today. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you next Saturday at 11 a.m. for Arts Arts Explorers. Thanks.